As the 1998 Major League Baseball season dawned, the American public remained disenchanted with the game. Bitterness from the 94 strike, which resulted in the cancellation of the World Series, still lingered, and it was very much reflected in the league's attendance numbers, which lagged for the next three years. By summer's end, however, the strike was a distant memory. The love between America and baseball was rekindled, thanks to the historic, Herculean efforts of two prodigious sluggers. Today, the race between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa to break Roger Maris' single-season home run record is remembered as much for being tied to the steroid era as it is for the joy it brought baseball fans at the time. But with less jaded eyes in February of 98, baseball fans watched Mark McGuire arrive for his first spring training with the St. Louis Cardinals amid much fanfare, with many speculating that this could be the year that McGuire broke Maris' long-standing home run record of 61 in a season. There it is, 61. Maris' record was also being eyed, though, by Ken Griffey Jr., the Seattle Mariners superstar who had walloped 56 homers in 1997 en route to the American League MVP award. With home runs surging throughout the league, a compelling chase for history seemed to be in store. And it was. Except it wasn't Griffey who proved to be McGuire's worthiest adversary. That role was ultimately played by a 29-year-old outfielder named Sammy Sosa, a Chicago Cubs fixture who had never before eclipsed 40 homers in a season. Here's Sammy Sosa way back. Might be out of here. Could be. It is. Holy cow. Sammy McGuire, for his part, wasted no time in his pursuit of history. By the end of April, he had 11 homers, tied with Griffey for the most in the majors, and an even more torrid May pushed the Cardinals star well out in front of the pack. Watch that baby. Oh, man. That is an upper deck, third row of the upper deck, third home run of the night, Cardinals leading. McGuire's 16 round trippers for the month gave him a league leading 27 and put him on pace for more than 80 for the campaign. He just seems like a good guy. He looks like a good, clean cut athlete. Oh, he's gorgeous. He's cute. Baseball fans knew this wasn't normal. Two months into the season, McGuire was already receiving standing ovations on the road. Milwaukee wants the curtain call. We got it. It wasn't just baseball fans marveling at McGuire, though. His prodigious power was drawing international attention, too. Everybody thinks this is great for baseball, period. Sosa, meanwhile, was enjoying a strong start to his season in Chicago, but with only 13 homers to his name at the end of May, he wasn't yet mentioned in the same breath as McGuire. That is, until a preposterous record-breaking June catapulted him into virtual lockstep with the Cardinals superstar. Sosa, in fact, had the best month, well, ever that June, setting a new record for homers in a month with 20. By month's end, Sosa had 33 dingers on the campaign and sat just four back of McGuire. Into the stratosphere, Sosa's third of the night. The race was on. By July 1st, both players were easily on pace to smash Maris's record, and as the All-Star break neared, their joint pursuit of the single-season home run crown was the most compelling storyline in sports. What a country, huh? Eh? <laughs> Hi. 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 Hi, everybody. As the stretch run loomed, the race tightened. Coming out of the All-Star break, McGuire's pace slowed. Sosa made up ground. And when the Cardinals arrived in Chicago on August 17th for a must-watch series against the Cubs, both sluggers were stuck at 47. 14 shy of Maris's record, with just over five weeks to go in the season. But if there was any doubt starting to creep in as to whether either of them could do it, it was soon gone. On the final day of that series between the Cubs and Cardinals, Sosa clobbered a two-run shot in the fifth inning, while McGuire went deep twice, his first multi-homer game in more than a month. Swung on, belted, hit the center field, Judson back at the track, at the wall, McGuire has number 49. By September 1st, both players had 55, and it was once again a question of when, not if, they would each surpass Maris' total of 61. I want to catch the baseball. I want the million dollar ball. <laughs> As their chase neared its climax, everything else in sports took a back seat. 
As the New York Times noted in early September, Fox was even prepared to preempt NFL football and America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, in favor of a Reds-Cardinals game to show McGuire's potential bid for history. Cincinnati Reds have not allowed a McGuire home run in 1998, the only team in the National League that can say that. In the left field, they can't say it. On September 7th, with a red-hot McGuire on the precipice of tying Maris, the Cubs arrived in Chicago for a series with the Cardinals. Some scheduling serendipity had brought the game's two Titans together for this potentially historic moment. Would you clear up one thing? Which one of you is the man? <laughs> he is the man in the United States. I am the man in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> That night, McGuire tied Maris' record, ripping a line drive off the left field foul pole at Bush Stadium as Sosa watched from right field. The following evening, with five of Maris' children sitting in the stands, McGuire became the new single season home run king. You have made this a summer that generations will remember. This thing wasn't over yet, though. McGuire didn't homer for a week after passing Maris, and Sosa pounced. The 2 1. Swap on, there she goes. Number 62. Move over, Big Mac. You got company. As the final weekend of the season loomed, the two remained deadlocked at 65. And while ties are decidedly un-American, nearly half of American adults would have been content to see McGuire and Sosa finish with the same number of homers. Both players themselves had even said they'd love to share the new record, but it was ultimately McGuire who cemented himself as the new single-season home run king, going deep five times over his last three games to finish with 70. Sosa went homerless over his final three games of the season, finishing with 66. As McGuire soon learned, it's good to be the king. Please welcome the one and only Mark McGuire. Congratulations, Mark, on being the showstopper of the year. Ultimately, though, McGuire's record would be short-lived, as Barry Bonds took his crown just three years later. Bonds hits one. More than 20 years later, moreover, the legacy of that 98 home run chase remains tainted to some due to McGuire's post-retirement confession to performance-enhancing drug use and Sosa's link to PEDs as well. I took very, very low dosages just because I wanted my body to feel normal. I've been wanting to come clean ever since 2005. And, you know, I didn't know where or when or how. Just been holding this in. That season, in fact, is widely regarded as the apex of the steroid era, baseball at its most drug-addled. Still, there's no question that the 98 season remains one of the most unforgettable in modern baseball history, an endlessly entertaining summer in which McGuire and Sosa helped re-establish the game as America's pastime, one moonshot at a time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.